right, you guys. So here's where we're at. Um, as you can see, we're going with a butcher block slab. Okay, you can get these from Home Depot, Lowe's. You can get them from anywhere. These are these are great bases. This is great to actually you know do the epoxy on. Uh, a lot of reasons why. For one, they're they're already an inch and a half thick. You're able to put curves and bends into the edge work with a router so that it doesn't have to stay up and down. The reason, just our opinion, the reason you would not want to leave this like this right here. A lot of people that pour resin over something, you ever notice the surface of the resin is pristine. It looks great in their video. You ever notice that a lot of them don't show you the edge? Or if they do, here's what it looks like. When the resin gets on here and looks pristine, as it goes over, because this is vertical, there's no kind of curve to it. It wants to run. And what happens is when you look down this on the finish, every bit of this face here has run marks in it, no matter what the color. Your black, blue, clear, doesn't matter. It's going to show runs because this is dropping rapidly. Versus if there was a pitch curve on here, it would gradually roll over. So that is a huge, huge difference. That's why a lot of the counters we do, uh, not only do we think it's a better looking look to curve them, but that is the purpose behind it. Because if we leave that flat, we already know it's going to show runs in it. So a lot of people that pour over like a Formica, you know, something, uh, a cheaper counter that's already in play at somebody's home, if that front edge only rolls over and then goes flat, that's why that that edge is running because it needs to curve over and under. Uh, butcher block is awesome. As you can see, this is exactly where this top's gonna go. We're gonna put in the far top and make that match up here so that we can get our turn. And to do so, we're actually gonna butt these together. We're gonna biscuit joint. We're gonna show you that. We're gonna biscuit joint both of these lock them together, and then we're gonna route over and under all the way around to make it look concurrent. We're gonna hide the seam down there. We're gonna show you that as well. It's just probably not gonna be on this video. What I wanted to show you here is the fact that we are using butcher block. Uh, this is our first choice of the basis that we go to do any type of our tabletop resin. So don't get it confused with casting. Um, as you can see right out the gate here, we're completely level. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and spin this. Come on down this way. Look, bing. Bing, that's what you're looking for. Now, peek underneath the here, all this was timed out really well. We were able to come in, we ripped this two by six, to be short because it was going to hit these beams going across and it was actually going to lift our counter out of square, out of level. So we went ahead and ripped that off and, and pretty much made it like a two by five at this point. Uh, we wanted, the counter was in here, everything was level. Then we were able to push this up exactly all the way across where we needed it, clamped it in place and then started screwing these so that we knew when we brought this back in here, it was gonna sit tight and flush. The other counter is gonna go back and it's gonna to touch right here. And it's automatically gonna have the overhang that we needed. So this is our last two tip boards. We've already put this corner together. We've already put this corner and this wall down here to create the cavity for our shelving over here. So now we're actually ready to move forward on the tops. The rest of this we can dress up later as we go. Um, this is going to be super cool. I mean, we're just tickled to death with everything, how it's going to turn out. Um, you know, we're really big fans, but we wanted to show you this on the front side. Um, the, the actual counter that we have coming over here, that's going to pull into this one. This is where our biscuit joints are going to go. And that's what we're going to go over here. It's either going to be in this video or the next video. So right now, we just wanted to show you out the gate where we're at, what's going on. 
Now you can kind of see the other counter will go here. This one will sit down here underneath. Uh, so now we're going to go in here and get this counter correct. And I want to point this out because this is probably a lot of people's situation right here. I want to show you. Look how I have this level sitting up here. So clearly you can see that this wall here is not straight. Okay, we got a trick for that. We're going to show you here in just a second. So give us just a second. We'll bring you right back in. We're going to get this one cut to go down here on the end, and we're going to show you what we're going to do with this being so far out of whack up here where it hits the wall. All right, so look, this is very crucial right here because this is probably a lot of people's, uh, you're going to run into this yourself. Come here and check this out. Now look, look at this gap. Okay, and then we're hitting. So there's an obvious bow right here in the wall. Um, typical in drywall. You know, you can't really help that. So the way we're going to cheat this, because you got to cheat it. You don't want to try to take the contour of this to the wall. If you all have seen that little trick where you can set a washer down here and stick a pencil in it and ride that, that's not going to look so hot at the, at the finish. You want to see a straight line at the finish. So how we're going to trick that, come up here and look. Show them this corner right here, Tom. Just lean the phone over. Yep. See, we already figured this out mathematically. We already knew that we were going to have a gap there because we measured the outside of the counter hitting the wall. Held this flat to our one that was already in play, so it gave us an ending point out here, and that's how we knew how far that wall was bowed. Now, with that being said, how we're going to fix that is we have enough breathing room in here to slide back. That bow is the problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set the jam saw here completely flat. And we're going to push right into the drywall. And we are going to cut this straight into the drywall. We're going to curve these two edges and cut up underneath. And we're going to pull that drywall completely out so that we can take our counter and slide in. So with the thickness of the drywall being a half inch, we only need to go into the wall cavity three-eighths of an inch. So we'll have an eighth of, a eighth of an inch of room to play with once we're in there. All right, so look, there you go. So we had cut that and slid that in. As you can see, we're slid under and pushed into the wall evenly. Now we come down here and look. See, we're completely even. Now, the reason this is, we, we figured this out on purpose because even though we can get to this on the outside here, we actually took this outside. You all know, a, if you don't know, a router will make a huge mess. So we took this outside and we measured to stop two inches short and two inches short. This has already been routed over and under. We're going to show you, but we measured that on purpose. We're going to take this one outside now that this one is in place. Now we're going to take this one outside and do the same thing. Stop here and stop right about here. That way, all we got to do here in a little bit, once this is joined, is route this distance. And the same with this. We're going to come in, route here, and turn and be done. That way, the only routing we're doing in here making any type of mess is just a four-inch span, two inches on both sides. 